But um, I just wondered what your um, initial reaction was to Amy Jump's screenplay, because it's, it's not a film that kind of handholds the audience in any way. No. Um, I found its provocation and, re and rebelliousness really appealing. Um, because I, th I think uh, there aren't that many films like this being made anymore. Um, and it was a chance to do something um, quite brave and risky. And, and um, the, the, the provocation is in the DNA of the novel. I mean, J.G. Ballard's High Rise has become a kind of classic of um, counterculture in a way. Um, for its challenge and for its prescience. And, and Amy had retained all of that in, within her adaptation. Um, I, I found it sort of, if I found it frightening and, uh, and immediately um, appealing. I, don't, I can't explain why really. And there's some darker moments uh, yeah. in the film. What kind of atmosphere does uh, Ben Whitley create on set? Uh, the, he creates the most extraordinary atmosphere of, of permission and playfulness. Because I think actually when a group of actors and a crew um, are required to investigate darker material, the best way of doing that is, is to create a sort of safe boundaries within which everyone feels safe um, to lose their inhibitions and create a kind of uh, chaos, <laughs> to not to put too fine a point on it. Um, and I really admire him for that. Because there, I know there are probably directors who would perhaps be more manipulative about putting their actors, making their actors feel unsafe um, and shooting that insecurity and, and that being a source of um, vitality and drama. But actually, I think it's much more generous to, to say, you know, here are the hours we're working. Um, let's put some music on and, and, and whatever you do is fine. Like whatever, whatever happens. Um, is is not judged, is received with respect for bravery and commitment, and so some of the stuff that happens in the film was was um, was really committed to because I think every actor felt safe in Ben's hands. And it's so visually striking, some really yeah. memorable images. One of my um, favourite is with the air hostesses and you, with you sort of dancing with them. Can you tell us a little bit about <laughs> creating that? And I believe it was you know quite spontaneous. Completely almost, wasn't spontaneous. It? it was on the first day of shooting. Um, and we had a, we deliberately scheduled quite a light day for everyone, so we could just everyone could get warmed up and get the wheels turning. And um, uh, it was supposed to be a shot of a dream sequence that Lang was having in a in a kind of inebriated state, where he bumped into some air hostesses on his way in, and and he dreamt that they were tottering towards him in his dreams. And I had been. It was about we were filming very. Um, a very strict regimen between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and we had to finish at 6 because Ben didn't want to go over time because then he'd have to pay the crew and he wanted to save that money for uh, visual effects to create the exterior of the building. So he was really, he kept himself to a very strict time schedule. And it was about quarter to six when we got to the scene and, and he was shooting the air hostesses. They went down one way and they went back. And I was watching, I was, I was finished for the day, I could have gone home. And I said, I was just watching the scene at Ben's side and I said, should I get in there? Um, just as an option, you know, you might want to, you might want to see Lang as a participant of his own dream. And Ben's like, yeah, go on, man. Um, and I said, what shall I do? And he said, I don't know, you should probably dance with them. Um, and very quickly, somebody put some music on and <laughs> we shot it in one take. Um, and that's what stayed in the film is we just came up with it in the moment. Um, it was, uh, it was great, actually, and it gave me such confidence of like, oh my God, this is how Ben shoots. He's open to collaboration. We can have a spontaneous idea, and we can shoot it, and it'll be in the film. And, and that kind of um, immediate, spontaneous flexibility and, and confidence was amazing to see in him, um, and kind of set the tone for the rest of the shoot. I love the music in the film. I just wondered, was that an element that you particularly enjoyed when you saw the film for the first time? Yes, very much. Um, I'm a huge admirer of Clint Mansell. Uh, I think he's written some of, the, some of the greatest scores in the last decade or so. And um, I knew ahead of time that uh, Ben had managed to persuade ABBA to lend um, the recording rights to SOS. 
and had also um, enlisted Portishead to do a, to do a cover of that. Um, and so the thread of that song, as it as it, which is such a perfect, it puts you so perfectly in the seventies. It, it's such a um, it's such a fantastic song because actually the lyrics are quite bleak, but it's such a pop classic that people forget that it's a very actually the lyrics are very dark. Um, and I think the, the way he uses that song, the way he uses that track across the film is genius. Yeah, Very powerful in the film, yeah. Um, and Jeremy Irons is quite uh, chilling at times in the, in the film. What did you enjoy about creating that on-screen relationship with him and what do you particularly admire about him as a fellow performer? Yeah, um, I've worked with Jeremy Irons before. We, we played father and son in, in, a, in a television series for the BBC called The Hollow Crown, which is an adaptation of the, what's called the Henry ad, um, Henry IV, part one part two and Henry V and he played uh, Henry IV and I played his son Prince Hal and it was really nice to see him again because we had a good working partnership in that and there's something quite paternal about Royal's relationship with Lang he sort of selects him as a kind of successor or an ally um, I really admire Jeremy I, he's never I, I believe him in everything he does I think that's. I think many people would agree with that. Um, he's got a, a real gravitas and sophistication, um, and a natural intelligence that he doesn't have to. Um, it's just. It's just innate. It's part of who he is that I think um, the camera always picks up on, and and so his his. Um, essential weight as a, as a performer with such experience, I think really lends itself to Royal, um, who's an eccentric architect living in the penthouse of the building. Um, Jeremy Irons is also a very good squash player as well. Let it be known. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hiddleston, thanks very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!